Good day, this is Brad Kaler, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter, because our society is based on true lies and leadership. Super wheat spreader, the body of Christ cheat sheet. Yes, folks, you have it right. This is the super wheat spreader the body of Christ. Why are there so many strange bedfellows in Washington? Let's check out how to connect with Adonai God differs from just listening to organized religion. See why there are so many strange bedfellows in Washington is a peculiarity that I have been wondering about for a long time. Behind this election, is a fake religion. Behind the violence in the streets and the creation of COVID is a cult surrounding Donald Trump. This is a cult based on the old gods, one at the heart of modern evangelical Christianity, one that looks to the book of Moses, the Pentateuch, the Jewish virtual library states. Kuenen, and as Q-A-N-O-N understands to an extent, all evangelical Christianity is based on debasing Jesus and exalting Moloch. Why are there so many strange bedfellows in Washington? Here is your answer. All evangelical Christianity is based on is debasing Jesua HaMashiach and exalting Moloch. Evidence concerning Moloch worship in ancient Israel is found in the legal as well as in the historical and prophetic literature of the Bible. In the Pentateuch, the laws of the Holiness Code speaks about giving or passing children to Moloch. Leviticus 18 verse 21. And the law in Deuteronomy speaks of passing one son and daughter through fire. Although Moloch is not named in the Deuteronomy passage, it is likely that this cult was the object of the prohibition. Is everything going around us today because crazy people in the Old Testament are following the gods? What am I saying? Is everything going around us crazy today because people believe in the Old Testament gods? Moloch, yes. Affirmative. Are those gods real? Can they do things, make things happen, reward and punish? For some of them, they believe it can. What a shame. See, the wonderful scenario is this that it is upside down. I am talking as a person that was a prodigal son for a long time. And I've been wondering, what is the attraction among the powerful to these old gods? They do answer prayers that include child sacrifice, and they make promises, and dreamy afterlife, and a rapture. But is that true? Are these gods capable of doing anything at all? Evangelical Christianity is a hearsay based on bending Christian worship to the will of the old gods. Yes, folks, you hear it right. You hear it right. I was brought up as a Christian. I was wondering about it for so many years. Three times excommunicated. Wondering what in the world gave someone the right to act like God? Many years of studying Bible school, practical Bible school, seminary, colleges, university courses, preaching for 12 years as an evangelist in prison. Folks, I have a right to question what in the world is going on? Is there true justice in our society? When I watch the craziness going on around President Trump, I can understand why he is a masochist, why he only thinks about himself. 
and you say, how do you dare say something like that? Okay, so he's a narcissist. It's all about himself. And he punishes other people if you don't do what he wants you to do. Worship Mr. President Trump. Is he a moron? I'm not sure. I think he knows the answer to that question. But why can we all be accepted by the Father, El Shaddai, when we are peculiar? See, in the eyes of God, we are somebody special. You are a special character. You are a person or a group or a thing that is distinctive. A mental barrier is a limiting belief or assumption we have about ourselves regarding our ability, potential, our self-worth. It keeps us from doing something or acting on something as asking for a promotion or public speaking, financial investing and losing weight. Mental barriers can hinder a person from reaching their potential. Folks, to reach our potential is to be reunited with the Father. So he said and wrote restorative justice that we can follow. He gave us a path, but the path sure does not lead through Mr. Donald Trump. That the body of Christ elects the mentor, stands in the majority of those people, stand behind him to re-elect him. Because he is going to do something special for Israel. Folks, if you are the leaders of this movement, I'm talking about you folks, the billionaires, the hundred million dollar plus preachers. You're worth so much because you're so successful. I have good news for you. The Lord is going to deal with each and every one. And the little lady that has been praying for many, many years, worse in the eyes of everyone else, nothing. She is maybe the one that God will say, well done, you good and faithful servant. Folks, when we follow people, and we got to listen very careful because I don't say it with glee. I say it with sorrow in my heart. It has taken me many, many, many decades to figure this out. First, I went through bereavement, you know, like mad and also so exhausting, working like crazy, becoming successful, making millions of dollars in a very short time, and then making decisions to follow the right way, the right path, being stripped of billions of dollars of assets over an 18-year period by people that call themselves Freemasons, connected to the Illuminati, connected to the money. Yes, I was upset in that, about that in the beginning, but then I came to realize that is not what it's all about. Those are the three evil spirits, confusing spirits we are dealing with that Revelations talks about. Yes, three lying spirits, PMS. I wrote a book about it. It's published on Amazon, and it's called Deception Protocol, Rare Caleb, for the prodigal son blueprint. Deception Protocol, because the deception was politics, M for money, S for spirituality or religion. They are used to mold and create a group of people following and serving Moloch. Folks, it hurts when I share it. But I got to tell you, be aware we are following. See, mentally, we all understand the story about the prodigal son. But who is the prodigal son? It's you and it's me. And I don't care if your name is here, if you're the king of whatever kingdom you call yourself or the leader of whatever uh, country you consider yourself the leader of, or if you are nothing. We are all prodigal sons because we got disconnected when Adam and Eve got removed out of the paradise. But what we don't understand is that God is yearning for you. He wants to restore us. He gave us restorative justice and he sent his son and he became the way, the truth and the light. So folks, 
we can follow a truth. We can follow the way. But the way starts when we, as carnal individuals, start following, listen carefully, following the way, restore the way of God. That means that our heart that is carnal will become now spiritual. And that is for most people very hard to understand. That's why Mr. Trump can make a mockery out of his joining in, having leaders call out, forgive him a hundred thousand, thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollar check because you will be doing something good for God. You know, I'll tell you something. You want to know how you can do something good for God? By being yourself. Forget all the hype. If there's somebody that cannot afford a cup of coffee, come and invite him over. Have a cup of coffee with me. Here's the hamburger. Maybe it's something simple. But taking care of those that have nothing. Being in contact with those that are hurting folks. And right now, during the pandemic, so many people are exposed to grief. It's sad. I have so much that I want to share with you, but I believe it is more important to focus on the fact. Why is the problem of the body of Christ the same as the ones we had in 325 AD? Money, money, money. It seems to be the catalyst which seems to drive an organization of believers. It's not the mana anymore. Money is not mana. Sometimes we think we're getting the mana. God is opening doors. But according to the Talmud, mana, and even the Quran and the Bible, we all speak about the edible substance the word of God is something once we get it inside of us, once our eyes are open. And see, quite often a pandemic like this will open our eyes when the pain gets so much, breaking through through the mental barrier. See, this past year, I broke through several barriers, mental barriers. One barrier was professional and the other one was personal. But my successes both originated in the same place, my mind. The first barrier was a significant accomplishment because it was a culmination of a lifelong dream I could not let die. Breaking free of these mental barriers is not always easy. I know, out of experience, it's tough times, never last, but tough people do. But if you get through that mold and you break through, then the bonds and the chains won't hold you back. Think of it as a spring cleaning for your mind. Whether it is middle, in the middle of the winter or summer, spring cleaning of the mind, all the negative feelings and the thinking you've stored in your subconscious must be disposed of to reach your full potential. Would you agree with me? You might be saying, Bob, it sounds great. Or Brad Caleb, it sounds wonderful. But how communicate? How do I communicate with the higher self for answers? Because obviously, when I'm the prodigal son sitting in a big sty doing the things I don't want to do, doing the things I was forbidden to do because of my religion. We are in a carnal situation, and it is flesh. Folks, we have a spiritual mind. Now, here are some su suggestions to overcome those obstacles. Your higher self is your real you. So the creation, once we can communicate with God, that is the real you, that is our objective. So our soul consciousness, so much more than the physical form that we know so well. When we are hurting, we feel it. We know that there is a higher self, there is something that has unlimited potential, can live eternal, 
and it's part of you that excites you with inspiration and guides you with intuition and teaches you through insight. Well, our intentions and desires are all well known to God. Sometimes these useful flashes of intuition and inspiration can become a much more significant part of your life if you allow this communication to flourish. Connecting with your higher self is a paradox. You are connected always. It is more than a connection. You are a unity. The physical cannot be separated from the energetic, conscious you. But we are here in this physical state, in our body, this, our body. And part of that includes a feeling of separation from anything else. So where does this energy of you begin and where does it end? Here's how you connect with your higher self. What is our higher consciousness? Now, becoming aware that you are spiritually designed starts quite often with accepting who you are. See, I went through a very difficult period of my life when supposedly we had everything. The cars, the trucks, the planes, uh, access to the planes, helicopters, beautiful property, big office, so called what the world has to offer. But spiritually, where was I? I prayed, I spoke about God, I listened to the Bible. But I was a mess, folks. I was a prodigal son sitting in a big sty. And when gradually everything was taken away, and I'm talking everything, because I dare to stand up against a friend who happens to be the head of the Freemasons connected to the Illuminati. And in the beginning, I misunderstood till I came to see the real face of them. Moloch, evil, satanic. I realized I was the prodigal son. I'm not talking about you. I'm sharing with you how I got out of it. But it wasn't overnight. I took a while because I was angry. I was mad. How dare they? They lied to me. And I did what most people do. I blamed the system. The criminal court. Phony. Baloney. Lying. Cheating. Lawyers. Attorney generals, criminals themselves. But why are they? Because they are living in a carnal state. Yes, folks, they are serving mammon. Are you serving mammon? Or do you want to serve God? If you do, you want to open up your eyes, folks. Nature is a good place to start. Calming down, relaxing and understanding that you need help. Abba, Father, I was wrong. Forgive me. And a door will be open when our spiritual renewing starts. Restorative justice is not just something that happens because you say, Jesus. Because Jesus didn't exist, folks. It was Jesua, the way, the truth and the light. He left a path for us to follow. You see this path here, this path, this one here, that's a river. I love the woods. We had over 1,200 trees on our property, and I planted most of them. But you know what? I realized as well, when you leave a path, you need to follow. A path is designed for a purpose so that you can reach from one destination to the other destination. And in order to do that, it starts off with a spiritual mental block. How do I get to the other path? What is my consciousness? How do I get there? First and foremost, to come to that conclusion, Father, forgive me. I have sent you. How can I get back to the Father? 
our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Where is his kingdom, folks? His kingdom is inside of you. God loves you so much. But you have to make that move. And when we get back to the connection that the Lord has left for us, the path that he gave us, we are not mixing satanic stuff with the way. Like in 325 AD, the, during the Nicaea conference, when Christianity in essence became a religion, mixture of Moloch, Satan, satanic worship. Folks, when you read the papers today, that is what a lot of people are caught up in. Is it wrong? Seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added unto you. This is Brad Caleb, PhD, and by now you should know that my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. I continue to dig on the proper foundation of God Almighty so that the prodigal son and daughter will have a solid foundation. Would you want to join me? Contact me and make sure you subscribe. Thank you so very much. God bless you all. Bye for now.